What is the main role of the Blavatnik School in this rapidly changing world? So I think the Blavatnik School of Government um, it has a really important role to play, along with other schools of government that adapt quickly, to seizing the moment when people across the world recognise that government's really important. Getting government right is really important. And to get government right means to attract some of the best and brightest people from every society, people who can actually um, be trusted by their populations to serve them and to represent them and to take forward the public interest. And then to make sure that those people have every opportunity to be the best informed that they can, to have the best analytical skills, communication skills, listening skills, collaboration skills, critical thinking skills, and then to go back and to genuinely serve their communities. That's, that's why we think the Blavatnik School of Government is important. Obviously, you have uh, lots of young people in the school, and uh, how would you like to see developing mm -hmm. with them in the future? Mm -hmm. So the school, in the school we have young people, but we also have quite a few experienced um, policy makers in this year's cohort. You know, we have brilliant graduates from the world's top universities, but equally we have a, a deputy minister from the government of Afghanistan, a deputy minister from the government of Libya, um, a senior official from governments in Morocco, Singapore, Brazil. Um, so the class is a mixed one, and the result is that people learn from each other, not just about each other's cultures, each other's um, country's challenges, but they're also learning from each other's experience. Some of them have had actually to run and implement policy, and some of them have really focused on a particular way to analyse policy, but they're learning from each other fast. What will be the impact on general public? So the, the general public will, we hope, find the school of real benefit, partly because the research of the school about what kinds of policies work best will help all governments get it better right, as it were, and partly because the school really believes in bringing together you know, the best community organisers, the best non-governmental organisations, some of the most aspiring private sector companies and government officials, and putting them together in conversations, in workshops and conferences, so that they can much better understand each other's goals, aspirations, challenges, and work together to better effect. Okay, my uh, other question is, uh, do you think that China is going to rule the world? I think, um, I think China offers really important examples of public policy successes to the rest of the world, and we need to learn how to learn from China. But China also faces huge challenges of its own. As the Chinese government keeps saying, they're very aware of the challenge of inequality within China, of the challenge of climate change and environmental degradation. And now, as the world is watching China, of the credit expansion in China, that China might be on the brink of a financial shock. So China has a lot to keep itself um, focused on its own problems at the same time as it undertakes this very ambitious global sort of economic strategy. Um, I think it'll be a little while before we could say that China's in a position to, to rule the world. But it's a really important partner in global economic discussions. Mm. You are from New Zealand, I'm from South Korea, mm -hmm. and we live in UK. Yeah. How should a small countries like UK, New mm. Zealand, mm. Uh, South Korea mm. uh, respond? You know, I think it's partly because I'm from New Zealand that my preoccupation um, in the Blavatnik School of Government has been to look at government policy in all parts of the world and to choose not just to focus on the United States, for example, where there are so many fabulous, outstanding public policy schools that focus almost exclusively on the United States. Because the challenges for small countries are different. And I think small countries could do a much better job learning from each other and that's certainly what we're trying to do at the School of Government. You know, the, um, in the 19th century, there is a famous US uh, saying, mm -hmm. 
uh, Go West Young People. Mm -hmm. But recently, the former chairman of uh, uh, HSBC, mm -hmm. Lord Stephen Green, said, uh, rephrased it. Uh, he said, Go East, mm -hmm. young person. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Hmm. Um, well, I think it's good for people to go east and west and to learn from other parts of the world. You see, the thing that people often miss is that when you go to China, or even if you go to the United States or to you know, Brazil or some other part of the world, you don't just learn about the country you're visiting. You learn to come back to your own country with a more critical eye. And that's why it's so strengthening to look at other places and to take them seriously, not just to write them off on a set of priors. Okay, my final question. Uh, Voices from Oxford is viewed by young people mm -hmm. all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering whether you have uh, any advice to young people mm. in general. Come to the Blavatnik School of Government. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ulis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.